Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy X-2. Alright, before we uh, move here, I changed something with my setup a bit. And that has to do with Riku's abilities here. I forgot the poo-poo platter here. Uh, yeah, it's instant death. Uh, it, I believe it satisfies the eject status, so yeah, to instantly defe defeat all enemies, that could come in handy. So, decided I'd uh, switch her over to that for now, and then once she done that, she's done that, then I'll switch her back over to Ribbon, so yeah. So that I'd make sure I uh, touched on that. Also, I uh, changed one accessory I have set up to uh, for quick and easy access, and that is I decided to swap the defense bracer out for the shining bracer here. Uh, after some testing, I found out I was getting better results with this, so hopefully uh, those testing results are uh, consistent. So yeah, we're gonna be going with that instead of the defense bracer. So yeah, and just to, for refresher, this is how I've got my items set up. So yeah. I thought about moving Megalicious up, but I've only got six of them, because it heals the full party, so I just, eh, it's only six of them, so I'll just leave them there for now. Part of the uh, good, too good to use club right now, you know. <laughs> Alright, let's go uh, take a look at Vegnagun's chamber, I guess it is. Or I guess it was. See if there's anything, uh, any clues we might be able to uh, gather here, glean from here. Man, this... Maybe it's just the fact that we have a bit more understanding of what Vegnagun is that just feels so much more ominous in here than it did before. It's a huge cavern. Huge steel cavern, but yeah, it looks like nothing out there, so... Well, so what'd we come all come all the way down here? You might be asking me. Was that all just filler? Well, if it weren't for all the treasure we got, I'd be inclined to say yes, but no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so no sign of any other hidden caves. So, where else can we look? So let's take the quick, the quick way back, and then climb it all the way out again. Fights and all. All right. Thanks for the lift. So where haven't we searched? I mean, we could go off to the uh, the left side of the. Uh, and we could change the destination of that central lift to go up again, but didn't that just lead out here? And there's another lift over there, but it didn't. It just like lead to like an office or something. I don't know. Well, let's head off to the right here, and if there's nothing over here, then we'll uh, give it a shot. Look, the gold wings. Hey, guys. Lady Yuna, look, look, look. Ta-da! We found it all by ourselves. That strikes me as a little reckless, <laughs> um, but. Based on how well they seem to be able to handle themselves, I'd be more inclined to just follow them just for the sake of making sure everything's okay. Well, I hope so. <laughs> well, I'm sure they saw something in you. Alright, let's save it here. Alright, let's see where this leads. Hopefully not to her death.
The Infinito Cloister Zero. What could that mean? Well, at least it looks like they're safe. Where are we? Um, I know a place just like this. It's the uh, far plane. Oh, I wanted to say it. Oh, sorry. First in a year, you are. The place was long sealed away, until a man named Tremor came and unlocked its secrets. Into the depths alone he descended. Never did he return to the light. Nice story. About this Tremor, he... Wasn't Trema? Was it Machen who mentioned his name? Wasn't he the former leader of the New Yevon? Didn't he say he disappeared or something like that along those lines? Is he still down here? What's this? We get Crimson Sphere 6. Marching Sphere? Sure. Machina. It trembled and growled like a beast. I've never seen anything like it. When I saw the apparition, it got inside me. It made me feel fear, regret, despair. Same here. I can't explain why, but I felt so sad. Yeah. It was like... Somebody's raw emotions just came out of nowhere and hijacked my brain. Somebody? Somebody who? center at once. Protect the maester until the operation has concluded. That is your first mission as Crimson Squad members. What, we passed? Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> All right! <laughs> we did it. Yeah, we did. Run! Run! <gasps> Quiet! <sighs> Oof, that was intense. All right, well, I mean, if Trim is down here, could he still be alive? Within this labyrinth, fiends will appear despite any special abilities or equipment you may, you may be using. In other words, the charm mangled does not work down here. Via Infinito Cloister 1. Alright. Uh, is it here? No, okay, it's not this one. So, the Via Infinito. Oh, 
And we're having numbered cloisters as well. Something like that might give somebody some pause. <laughs> uh, does this work? Pretend knife. It's basically a uh, physical attack that uh, does a, an ult, uh, full break. Alright, looks like it's immune to it, so. Alright, so you might be wondering, is it truly infinite? Well, I guess there's one way to find out. And yeah, so what these uh, blue sigils on the ground, or um, um, glyphs on the ground do, you step on them and they recharge your HP and MP and they give you an opportunity to teleport back to the entrance. So keep those in mind. And I would recommend uh, stepping on one every chance you get, just for... Uh, Safety's sake, you no. Know, making sure you got your MP all charged up and all that stuff. So yeah. Anyways, let's let's go. Hi there. So yeah, we're gonna be seeing some uh, familiar fiends down here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the. Only fiends you fight down here are the fiends that you fought while exploring Spira. So, yeah. Cloister 2. And, oh, isn't this the one? Yeah, okay, so here, whenever you tell me. Yeah, no, we're good. That's one there. So yeah, as you can see, Dive Beak, Fly on Azul's, rather the Weak Fiend. Yeah, if you're wondering why I'm not using the uh, Lady Luck Dress Sphere down here for the double XP, double experience. Yeah, it uh, it does not make much difference at all. So yeah. But in any case, let's uh, keep going forward. I guess forward and down. See if we can't get to the bottom of this place. But yeah, having that, uh, going back to the uh, ability adjustment I made for Riku, having the, the Pew Pew Platter can actually help uh, uh, speed up Riku's ability, ability point again as well, so for any uh, fiends that it actually uh, connects with, you know. Probably noticing a pattern with the fiends here. And I think Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these are all the fiends we fought in Chapter 1, I believe. Close to 3. Right. One thing you might, might notice as you're going through this yourself is that you might end up on different floors than I do on uh, different, you know, as I, as I move forward. And yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't say randomly generated floors, so to speak, but they are, I guess, a set uh, number of floors, or floor layouts, and ra it uh, randomly chooses between them, kind of thing, for each floor, so, yeah. Yeah, there's a path off to the left and right there, and that would have ultimately just led you around to here, so, yeah, let's touch on this. Let's uh, keep, keep heading down. See where it leads. Number four, and this is another one where the, uh, yeah, it's back there. Okay, little dude. Hey, the stalwart. How's it going, buddy? This one, let's use Quartet Knife. Let's see if it works. Oh, I guess we didn't need it. But yeah, as far as, uh, the best Jerry goes for this place, because it's basically got all the 
pretty much got all the fiends we fought up to this point. Yeah, I've only really made note of the fiends to make uh, uh, better of concern, so yeah. Anytime you've got me asking, oh, is this uh, susceptible such an, to such an attack or anything like that, then uh, yeah, that's why. Keep going. Oh. Keep forgetting about that one. Keep in mind these fights with these tonberries that are actually on the uh well, that are physically in the uh the dungeon, so to speak, uh, you cannot run from them. So yeah, they are actually completely optional if you don't want to attack them, but uh, why not? We could use the, the the experience and the ability points, so yeah. Plus the time berries only have 9,999 HP, so yeah. And you can get others out of it as well, I believe, or I might be thinking of something else, but uh, I know you can steal others from it, but I'm not exactly doing that, but you know. I don't like it. Which also means we could potentially see our first uh, Tonberry Oversoul, too. <laughs> Floor six. Nice. I like when we don't need to walk very far. Seven. <coughs> Pardon me. But yeah, again, going back to the whole uh, ability situation with Riku, um, the fact that I'm taking her off ribbon for an extended period of time for the 80 AP required for the uh, Pew Pew Plowder, um, she'll probably be the next one to get the AP egg. And it's, uh, should uh, Yuna finish up with ribbon, so. Takuba! Did I ever show this thing on screen? Uh, it's weak to fire, but, you know. I, mean, I think it. I think it can poison you with its physical attack as well, so... It's got less than a thousand HP though, so... Kinda of hoping I get one specific uh, floor. Yes, you do see more than just tonberries wandering around these halls. And the one I'm thinking of would be nice to be able to uh, 
demonstrate on screen in this video, if possible. Alright, so yeah, anytime you get onto this floor, you do have to kill the Tonberry to proceed. So you just go off to the right at that T intersection. If you try to go left, you won't be able to. Um, the, the path is blocked, so yeah. However, if you take out the Tonberry, the path opens up. And I'm over here. Let's touch that. Oh. And we got ooh, oversold flame dragon. <laughs> and number 10 all right uh gonna go one more and see if we can't get that one that one uh, fiend yeah obviously with the the wind up on Riku's attack there is why I'm having her uh, be the first one to attack kind of thing, so yeah, generally. Increase the chances of actually getting a chain going. it we did not all right unfortunately i guess we're gonna have to wait until later let's get out of here for now so yeah once you teleport reach a certain uh floor and then you teleport out you can actually go directly back so yeah just continue from the deepest place to reach and you can continue on your path all right, uh, the fiend. Just in case you do run into it, I would be switching my. Uh, it is, like I said, it is visible on the in the dungeon halls there. So yeah, you'll know it when you see it. Um, kind of behaves like a dog in a way, but anyways, it's not a dog though. Well, rather a very rather large one anyway. But uh, it's called the Elder Drake. It's a very large Drake. I think it's the most powerful one of them all. It has 38,500 HP with 135 MP. You can steal one to two turbo weathers from it. It is weak to all four elements. And yeah, so that's pretty much the biggest reason why I've got Riku and Pain equipped on the Tetra Master because that's going to be invaluable for taking that thing out as well as quickly as possible with obviously having it having almost 40,000 HP. And it's probably one of the most dangerous fiends you can run into down there right now. So yeah. Um, it can, so yeah, it's a weak to all four elements, fire, ice, thunder, water, and it absorbs gravity attacks. Uh, apparently it is susceptible to eject, so there's an option, and yeah, it's uh, susceptible for all, susceptible to all four breaks, which means I would probably be having Pain use that, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Quartet Knife to start draining its, uh, strength, defense, magic, and magic defense. Uh, with each attack so yeah i believe it does it i can't remember it's one level or two levels it's not huge but it is effective it is rather worth it because of how much damage that thing can do especially with its physical attack so yeah i'd uh, recommend it go in that room with her with her um and yeah uh oversold if you happen to get it you have to kill 18 drakes to get it but oversold it has 42,350 hp so not quite not as or it's slightly more than its regular form so there's a there's a, a small mercy for you. It's got 135 HP or sorry 135 MP sorry and yeah you can still one to two 
steel, still steel, one to two turbo weathers from it. Same elemental affinity, same status immunities. However, does gain immunity to power break. Um, so yeah, keep an eye on that. I'd probably still well. Makes me think if I would actually continue with the quartet. I mean, the quartet knife does affect its magic attacks and its armor and mental break as well. So, so yeah, could help speed things up a little bit, I guess. So maybe I would still go with that. But yeah, um, and yeah, so oversold. It does have have uh, the ability to inflict death on you. I think it's got an, a death strike attack. So heads up there, and I. Th can't remember if that's I don't think that's it though it might be able to uh, breach any protection but I don't think that's the fiend I'm thinking of that has that that pierces a uh, uh, protection no okay now I remember what I'm thinking of it's something else um, so yeah it does have the death strike ability and it does single out white mages and black mages so heads up there if you happen to be using those but we're using the mascots so we should be good to go as far as that goes so all right, so yeah, that's basically how I would recommend going over the uh, Elder Drake if you happen to run into it, and, uh, well, good luck. Um, you definitely want to, on the note of uh, how much damage it does with its physical attack, you definitely want to get Yuna on the Mughal Kyrja as fast as possible. Um, oh, yeah, and also, I because it's visible on the world map, I would actually switch my setup. I'd be putting the Shining Bracer here, so Yuna would have the the Shining Bracer and Smooth Shaling. And then uh, Riku and Pain, I'd be swapping out the safety bits for the uh, the Crystal Bangles to double their HP so that they can survive its uh, attacks, so to speak. So yeah, where, whereas, uh, so that uh, Yuna can keep healing. Um, yeah, so that's that particular fiend is the reason why I decided to go with the Shining Bracer instead of the Defense Bracer. Just because, yeah, just... It's, uh, so that it doesn't, um, I was actually originally planning to use Walja as well, but like I said, just because uh, her healing is affected by Shell, like I said, I was having better results without Shell being up, so, yeah. So, yeah, um, hopefully that wasn't too confusing for you, but yeah, just, uh, Wiggle Kyrja all the way for Yuna in that fight, um, uh, revive as needed. Whether by by life jaw or uh, Mugo life, I'd probably just go with life jaw. It does require a lot of MP, but if you lose one or two at a time, kind of thing, that can be useful. So yeah, cure jaw and life jaw as needed, and uh, swapping the accessories around as I mentioned, and uh, yeah, just going ham on it. Uh, going with the uh, pains, uh, uh, what's it called again? Quartet knife to reduce its strength and all that fun stuff to debuff it. And uh, hopefully you shouldn't have too much issue with it. But yeah. Uh, also, when you finally, when you do defeat it, in the alcove that it jumps out of, that alcove, you can't see it, but that's where that, uh, that teleporter pad is to regenerate your HP and MP. So that's why I'm not, I'm not above telling you to use uh, the, the life jaw in that particular fight. Because right after the battle is over, you can just replenish your MP and HP there. Uh, at the start or as soon as you're done and obviously after that fight's done then i would be switching back over to our regularly scheduled setups <laughs> for the apa smooth smooth shaling safety bit and ribbon and uh go from there so yeah just wanted to make sure i at least went over that if i didn't see it so yeah but in any case i guess well we made it to well we made it through 10 floors of the place and uh yeah it seems that makes one wonder if this place indeed is infinite but i guess we'll have to just keep keep pressing on and uh see what we can find this is intrepid 83 setting off formerly known as Cyric 1983 if you've enjoyed the video i see please consider hitting the like button anywhere to to let me know that you enjoyed the video that you're enjoying enjoying the content and i thank you for the support as well and uh yeah helps uh, get this content to, to other people who uh who might enjoy it as well, and uh, yeah, thank you for uh, helping me do that, get this to them. And if you disliked the video and you made it this far, um, thank you so very much for giving me the chance. I feel like if you did make it this far, I, I guess maybe you, I feel like you may have been giving me a chance because maybe you, you felt there was something there, 
And well, I'd say well, if you're looking for anything else to watch, maybe check out some of my other projects over on Intrepid83. Uh, I'll leave the link in the video description for that and see if there's anything, anything over there that could potentially earn your subscription over there. And if it does, well, I'll see you over there. And again, thank you so very much for your patience uh, uh, for getting through this video. If you uh, didn't quite, weren't able quite to put it in the like category. So yeah, thank you so very much for that. In any case, thank you for spending some time with me for all of you. Take care. Thank you for spending some of your time here. Be blessed and have a good one.